to the Lima Talk. My name is Tasha. I am one of the primate keepers here at the park. And what I'll do is I'll tell you a little bit about the lemurs that we have. Um, and as you can see, they have a little bit of their food. So hopefully they'll stay in this area a little bit longer. But obviously, we all know it's very hot today. And the lemurs know it as well. So they'll probably disappear back into the shade in a little bit as well. So in here, we do actually have three different species of lemur, if you've managed to spot them all today. Uh, first of all, we have the classic, the King Julians of the lemur world, the ringtail lemur. And we have a family group of nine, so a mum, a dad, and seven of their offspring throughout the years as well. Now, to be fair, they do look the, uh, the same, very, very similar. However, they do all have names. Uh, the easiest one to tell is mum. She is called Humbug, uh, and she is the little girl here. Hello, she's walking over to me at the minute. This is Humbug. And you can tell instantly which one she is because she's got a very, very short tail. So really easy to identify. We also have some red lemurs in here as well. We have Kirioka, who is our boy. And um, he's quite easy to tell as well because boys have lovely white patches underneath their eyes. Whereas females, uh, like Yasha here, they lack the white on their face, but they have a much paler belly. And that is what happens with all male, female red bellies. And then we do have a third species of lemur as well, the crowned lemur. Now they're not out at the moment. They have chosen to stay in the house. It is a little bit cooler in there for them. Uh, but sometimes you can spot them through the window. Uh, and they're much smaller than these guys. They're kind of a grey, uh, gingery, orange colour. Uh, but they're still settling in. They are quite new. They've only been here for a couple of months. But like I say, if you manage to spot them, the best place to see them is through the window at the front of the house there. Now in the wild lemurs they come from Madagascar, that is the only place in the wild where you can find them. Making them really quite unique and really quite special. And on the island there's actually over a hundred different species and they are very different to each other. So one in colour, obviously we've got different coloured ones here but you get some that are jet black, some very orangey in colour. You also get some with bright blue eyes, big ears, long fingers. And they also differ in size as well. The smallest lemur that exists is a type of mouse lemur. And it's only eight centimetres in body length. So absolutely tiny. And um, up to the largest lemur, which is called the Indri. And the Indri stands about three feet tall. So they're an incredibly diverse type of primate. But like I say, they are only found on that one island in the entire world. Now, one thing lemurs are very good at is climbing. A lot of the time, these guys will be in the trees, especially the red bellies. And they live in quite dense tropical rainforests out on the island of Madagascar. So the trees is where they love to be. On a bit of a cool day, you'll often see them right at the top of the sycamore trees over there. Um, but all species of lemur are fantastic climbers. So climbing to the top of these pine trees is no problem for any of these. Uh, and things that help them, one is their back feet. If you manage to have a look, you'll see their back feet have a similar shape to our hands. Their big toes are like our thumbs, and they're also opposable like ours, meaning they can rotate them and hold on to those branches really easily. They've also got that lovely long tail as well. Now, Alima, they cannot hang from their tail or anything like that, but it's a fantastic balance aid. So a bit like us, when we walk across a beam, we put our arms out to stabilise ourselves. Lemurs do the exact same thing, just using their tail instead. Now, when they're climbing those trees, they'll be looking for their dinner. Lemurs in the world would eat lots of foliage, so lots of leaves, lots of flowers, lots of fruits, berries, and a few insects here or there. But I'm not going to lie, insects, definitely not their favourite at all. You should see the look they give us when we do offer it to them. Uh, but the bulk of their diet, they get lots of leafy greens and they do get lots of root veg as well. We also give them natural food as well in the form of browse. That's when we get branches from around the park with lots of leaves on to give to these guys. That could be uh, willow tree, hazel tree, uh, fruit trees if these guys are very lucky as well. Uh, and they actually, they actually really, really love it. Saying that then, one thing I did mention wild lemurs would eat is berries and fruit. And we actually do not feed them any fruit here. And there is a good reason for this. And that's because wild fruit is much lower in sugar. The fruit we have in this country is made for us. It's very sugary, very, very sweet. 
and that means it's not so healthy for these guys. Lemurs have quite a slow metabolic rate, so they can put on weight quite quickly, uh, but also they're also known to get things like diabetes. So we've rearranged their diet to keep them nice and healthy, and the root veg they get for the carrot, the sweet potato, and the things like the sweet corn as well, are a nice little sweet treat for a lemur instead of fruit. Now lemurs are very social, so they do like to live in groups. Ringtails can live in really large troops of 30 or more, which is why we have quite a few of them. Whereas the bellies and the crowns, they prefer to live in small units, which is why we don't have quite so many. And that's why we have just a pair of the red bellies. Uh, but when not one normally goes, the rest do follow because they do love to be with each other. You'll often see them curled up in what's called a ball of lemurs. Mostly when it's cold, they'll do it to keep warm. But sometimes, even on the hottest of days like today, you'll see them do it as well because they like to be really close to their family. Now when they're huddled up, you'll often see them grooming each other. Grooming is so important for a lemur to create those strong social bonds and um, that they're really well adapted to it. So some things they have, one, a very long claw on their back foot called a toilet claw. Sounds very gross, it's nothing to do with the toilet though. It's just a little bit longer so they can reach their head and their neck when they're grooming a little bit more easily. They've got special teeth, so their bottom teeth are shaped like a hair comb, really fine, uh, really squished together. Uh, and it is called a tooth comb, allowing them to rake through their fur. And then my favourite fact about a lemur is that lemurs have two tongues. So they've got a normal tongue like any other animal, but underneath they have a second tongue. It does move independently and it is spiky on the edges and it acts as dental floss. It slides through that tooth comb, keeping their teeth lovely, healthy and clean. So again, that is my favourite fact about a lemur. Now sadly though, out in the wild, these guys are actually getting rarer and rarer. They estimate Around 98%, so nearly all lemurs now, are threatened with extinction in some way. And a third of all lemurs are critically end endangered. Now those species that are critically endangered, we potentially might see them go extinct in a 10 year time frame if they don't get any help. Now the reason why lemurs are so threatened, one, well, they're just from that one island, uh, but Madagascar is quite a poor country. Uh, so it's not necessarily the people's fault, they need to feed themselves, they need to uh, make money somehow and a lot of time that's from the rainforest. So a lot of deforestation happens for timber but also for farming as well. And sadly lemurs, they are poached uh, and taken from the wild illegally to sell them as a pet. And primates, wild animals, lemurs don't make very good pets at all. Now it's not doom or gloom though, there are things we can do to try and help. The simple things just by recycling paper, you've all heard it before, but recycling paper can make a massive difference. A lot of the forest in Madagascar is cut down for paper production as well. So recycling means uh, less of the trees would be cut down from the wild, but also by just passing on the message to our families and our friends can make a massive difference too. Saying that though, by you guys coming here today, you've already helped us out and you've really helped the lemurs. We have a charity called the Wildlife Foundation and we support a charity called Help Simus. Now Help Simus supports five different species of lemur, the red belly and the ring tail being two of those five. And what we do is we send funds and resources out to them on the island. And it basically allows local communities to get on board, pay the local people out there to save the forest rather than them getting their income from taking those natural resources. So pay them for to patrol, uh, monitor lima species as well, and make sure no one's doing any uh, illegal logging in those forests. But also, we do try and build them schools and canteens, give them something back as well, to try and get them on board to save these incredible species. So we definitely thank you coming today and helping us support all these endangered animals. Now what I'll do is I'll leave the talk there if you do have any questions, feel free to ask, give us a wave, uh, I'll come over and answer any questions that you have. But thank you very much for listening, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day here at Yorkshire Wildlife Park. Thank you very much.